In the epic Julius Caesar, there's a moment when a wise elder exhorts a young protagonist. And I'll paraphrase to bring it into the modern world. He said, there is a tide in the affairs of men and women when taken at the flood lead on to fortune. And I'm here to tell you today that we are at a watershed moment in the web performance and operations business. In the entire industry and ecosystem, we're at a point where I want every one of you to think about how do we build the next billion dollar opportunity, the next billion dollar business, the next big problem, how do we solve it? Because I know every one of you can. By the end of my eight or nine minutes here, I want you to walk out being an entrepreneur inside your organizations for yourself or for your startups. So I'm going to then talk about the problems in web performance today are very big problems. When you see a performance problem, is it first of all in your browser? Is it in your mobile native app? Is it in a responsively designed website that's being displayed on an iPad or a tablet? Is the problem somewhere at the edge of the internet? Is it local? Is it because of an ISP? Is it because of your infrastructure? Is it the cloud infrastructure? Where is it? If it's in your infrastructure, is it your web page, your application? Is it your application code? Is it your Java calls? Is it your network? Is it your servers? And that's just trying to figure out where the problem is. I haven't even begun, and I don't even know about. How do you solve all these problems? How do you automatically fix them? How do you figure out to prevent performance problems in the first place? These are all very, very big problems. And big problems means we all, as a community, have to figure out how to solve them and solve the big problems. So I want to say that, first of all, the industry for web performance and operations is right here in this room. All of you, your problem solvers, your users of products, free and your own and commercial, your gurus who go and talk about how to make performance better, and your buyers and evaluators. You are the leaders inside your industry. So the industry starts here in Santa Clara, and it goes to these three other cities all over the world, thanks to the Velocity and the O'Reilly team. Now, what I want to talk about is to solve a big problem, start with building it. Build the solution. And you start first with thinking big. And I'm giving you examples of companies that have always thought big when they've solved these problems. Oracle, a relational database that runs on any hardware, any hardware. Facebook, building a social network for the entire world. Akamai, fixed performance. Amazon, run your IT in the cloud. Google, make the web faster. These are big, big, hairy, audacious goals, and I want you to think about what those problems are in web performance. But also, you want to think inside the box a little bit. They say you should think outside the box. No, think inside the box. Think about your niche, the problems you face, figure out what performance issues you know about, and how do you use your expertise in performance and operations to go and figure out the solution. So I'll provide some tips and lessons from Keynote. I've been in the company for 11 years. We're a little startup. We're a public company today, hundreds and hundreds of employees, and we're not even finished yet. We're going for the big billion dollar business opportunity, as I want every one of you to be. So we began with performance monitoring in 1995. Gosh, that is a long time ago, 17, 18 years ago. Wow. So we were going for a big problem, which was the end user's experience really matters, and we need to measure that. So the first lesson that we received is when you're trying to solve a big problem, be prepared to hear a lot of no's. Because why? Because there are entrenched ways of solving problems, and there's a lot of investment in how you solve performance problems. So if you're solving a big one, you're doing something different, and you're going to hear no's. So we heard, no, we monitor server health. We don't want end user performance monitoring. No, we already monitor performance, inside the firewall, that is. No, you're a startup. You're not a public company. We can't use you. My favorite one, no, my customers are not complaining about site speed. To which we said, 
That's because they're clicking over to Amazon.com. This was 1995. And remember, in 1995, they said, who's Amazon? To which we said, it's just a dot com. They're not a public company yet. So for those of you who listened to companies like us and believed in us, I want to say thank you, because you have proven that the customer experience really matters. And now an industry has built up around it. Steve and John and the O'Reilly team have put you all in a room, put us all in a room together to help solve these problems. So I'm going to give three tips from our experience on how you build a billion dollar business. We're halfway there. First of all, you've got to start with the right technology, because technology is just a ticket to the game. But start with the right technology. So I'll give you our lessons on how we introduced real user monitoring, which is a new service that we have. And I welcome you to come to our booths and take a look at it. Real user monitoring is a big problem to solve. But the technology decision, well, first of all, here's what it looks like. It's easy to understand. This is our product. And we'd welcome you to come and take a look at it. But it's not about our product. It's about the journey that we went through in order to decide how to solve the real user monitoring problem. So it started 10 years ago in this industry. RUM was a data center appliance. Some pioneering companies that don't exist anymore, some of them like Adlex and Coradiant and TD, they all built real user monitoring by putting a data center appliance. That's sort of like if you're on a highway and you're trying to figure out the speed of all the cars, you want to put sensors up on the highway somewhere maybe at the exits, maybe at the signs, and you watch all the cars. Or you could do the keynote way of doing things, which was you know, take a test, test car, like a Google, test, like a Google uh, driverless car, and send it off, and then measure the performance. But really, what you want to do is you want to start with the browser, because the best way to measure the speed of a car is by putting a speedometer in the car to measure its own performance. So then deep instrumentation came along, and people put tags inside the sites to measure site performance. Well, that has a lot of problems because for those engineers in the room and physicists, you know about Heisenberg's uncertainty problem. The heavier your tags are, it can actually cause performance problems itself. So putting timers and timing everything in your websites is not really the way to go. So we waited, and we said, there's got to be a better way of doing this, and we began by listening to the folks who really understood performance. I and many others are part of the velocity planning committees. And we asked the browsers to change, the community as a whole. And the browser vendors, the developers who were there in the room said, we're already thinking about it. And thank you to the Chrome and the Firefox and the IE teams, to Arvind at, uh, at Chrome, to uh, Jason and Eric at uh, the IE teams and the Firefox developers. They actually made the browser talked to you. They began collecting information. And it's called the navigation timing spec. That's how it started. And now every browser collects information about your performance, just like the cars on the freeways know about the speed. So the second thing was, all right, collect it directly from the browser. Now there's an industry standard, but make it very easy to use, of course. Our users don't code. The performance analysts, they're in operation. Some of them code, some of them don't, but make it easy. You know, make it as, and you don't need to manage storage and reporting and compliance. Make it as easy as Google. So the two lessons so far were start at the right point. Make the right technology decision. That's a starting point is really important. And the second is make it easy. But that's not enough because you have to solve the hard problem first. And when we looked at this, we said we've got to think like Google entering search when everyone thought that Yahoo and other companies had sewn up the market. And they solved the hard problems. So, of course, measure the three-screen experience. How's your website on a PC browser? How's it on a mobile device? How's it on a tablet? But also integrate synthetic monitoring with browser real user browser measurements. Operations teams all over the world, they're used to monitoring server health, websites, infrastructure, network, synthetically. When performance alerts happen, you have to be able to correlate that with real user measurements. And that's what we have done and we are delivering a product that we announced today, which is called Real User Perspective. I invite you to come and take a look at it. And some people have given it some good marks. And we'd love to get your experience and 
thoughts on it. But the most important thing is create a culture of high performance and expect more from your teams. Build a billion dollar business. Figure out how to do it well. Look for that entrepreneur inside of you, inside your companies, for yourself, for the startups you want to work with. But start now. The audience is listening. The industry is listening. It starts here in this room. Thank you very much for having me here.